So here we have the spreadsheet I've developed. Now, this is all my own work um, other than this um, diagram here, this picture here that I uh, downloaded from the Racetech website. So that explains things like relaxed set length, uh, free length, installed set length, etc. Now, we're going to enter the data um, for the standard Honda cartridge and those uh, measurements that we took go into these cells up here. Yeah, so we enter the uh, spring free length, so that was 269. All these dimensions are in millimetres because uh, I'm a metric man. And the relaxed set length, that was 235.5. The extended set length was 270. The installed length of the spring was 259. And the spring rate, and it has to be in kilograms per millimetre. And I've put a note here. Um, if your spring is quoted in Newton per millimetre, you just divide it by 9.81, which is acceleration due to gravity, um, divided by 9.81 to convert to kilo kilogram millimetres. So the spring was a 0.95. Now these two cells here, um, what we're doing here is setting up a table for um, turns of preload. So the default uh, is set on one. So we've got a column here for each turn of preload adjustment. And then this is the thread pitch of the preload adjuster. So a preload turn equals how many millimetres? One millimetres. Now the vast majority of motorcycles that I'm aware of um, have a thread pitch of one millimeter so one turn of the preload adjustment nut um, pushes it down one millimeter I don't know of any bikes that don't use a pitch of uh, one millimeter now the beauty of this is if you wanted to see what a half a turn does well you can change that to you know uh, increments of half a turn and then you'll get along here half turn intervals We'll leave it at one. Um, and then up the top here, I've just got a cell where you can put in the motorcycle and then the date of setup, just for your records. So these are the targets, um, and I've put some default numbers in there that you could put your own, but. You know, the actual preload on the spring, um, we want it to be somewhere between 5 and 11 millimetres. Now remember, if you change springs to a stiffer spring or a um, lighter spring, well then the preload, on the, the preload you end up with on the spring is going to change because uh, we're putting the preload on with the top out spring. But generally that, that's the sort of number you're after. The relaxed preload, um, I generally think it needs to be between 35 to 42, but that will change a bit. A stiffer mainspring will give you a higher relaxed preload reading than a um, lighter spring. This is reasonably important here. The targeted extended actual preload, I've said between 0 and 2 millimetres. So that's the, when you pull the cartridge out completely, how much uh, is left on the main spring because you don't want it rattling around. So I've put zero to two. And then these are just calculations that come through from the data we entered over to the right there. Now this, it, this will actually calculate the top out spring rate. Um, so when you do your measurements, you want to try to make them as accurate as you can. So 
So I'll just make this a bit smaller. So all that data's in there now, and I've used the conditional formatting. So what you're looking for is three lots of green here. That's the actual spring preload, the extended preload, and the relaxed preload. So if they meet those parameters up here, then it will turn this the cell green. So um, you know, in this case here. Uh, I need to be running the preloader just uh, between two and three turns and you know two turns will give me a 10.6 millimeters of preload on the spring um, my extended preload will be one millimeter and my relaxed preload will be 35.5 millimeters um, if I go one more turn I end up with 10.92 and 36.5 I'll tell you now that those that, that actually feels very good on the track you know, two, two to three turns. Um, so if we fine tune this a bit and make it say um, half turns, so you can see here you've got four four columns where the three parameters are all green. Um, yeah, so it's saying here you know one one point five turns. 1.5 turns will give you, you know, 10.4 millimeters of preload, half a millimeter of extended spring preload, and 35 mils of relaxed preload. So you can print these off, take them to the track with you, and then you know exactly what the effect will be of turning the preload adjuster. You can just refer to this cut table. This is handy. I've found it very handy anyway. Now we've got three worksheets in this workbook so I'll just go to the second worksheet and I'll put in the data for the Olin's uh, cartridge the road and track cartridge so you may remember we had a spring free length of 259 259 we had a relaxed set length of 224 had an extended set length of 263 and we had an installed length of 250. Now in this case uh, the spring I have in the Olin's cartridge is an Olin's spring that's quoted at 10 newtons per millimeter so I need to divide that by 9.81 so I'll just put the formula in I'll just go uh, equals 10 divided by 9.81 so that's a 1.02 kilograms per millimeter and these targets here I'm leaving as they are except I'll drop that one back to two millimeters <clears throat> and we can see what what we've got so you can see here it's telling me that between four and six turns meets those parameters so um, yeah four four to five turns probably five turns is is about it you know that gives five turns gives me 10.3 um, offspring preload one millimeter extended preload and 40 millimeters of relaxed preload. So there you have it. Uh, now this will be on Dropbox and you can download this for your own use. It's all protected. Um, any cell with a yellow um, fill is a cell that you can access and put a number into or put a comment into. Um, any, anything else is, uh, is a calculation, is a phone. I hope you find this very helpful. Thanks for watching.